Jen. Uh, I know I have a lot of information to share, so let maybe we can begin. Of course. Uh, it's my great honor and pleasure to welcome everyone to International Education Week at, at Drake University. And uh, as Anique mentioned, special welcome to those who are attending from our partner universities abroad. Uh, thank you for connecting with us here today from all the corners of the world. We look forward to welcoming you in person for next year's International Education Week. Uh, I know we all have that same hope. Um, having you on campus this week is really a highlight for so many of us. We are grateful for the many collaborate, collaborative opportunities um, that we have undertaken with you and the ones that are currently in the works or yet to come. So those of you attending the town hall today will learn more about these programs that have so much of an impact. And we all know that it's been a, a bit of a tumultuous ride for all of us in higher education since March 13th here at Drake 2020, uh, with events canceled, programming mm -hmm. and classes moved to remote or virtual. And uh, of course, all of the travel restrictions that have been imposed, global engagement has certainly not looked the same uh, with mobility playing such an important role. However, we know that a global perspective is gained not just from travel, but from cultural exchange and from intercultural learning and development. And this is infused into the fabric of our institution. So we have been able to uphold our commitment to responsible global citizenship via virtual connectivity, global content in our classroom, and through joint projects with partner universities. And I really credit um, our executive director, Anik Keel, for bringing that mindset to Drake University. We are, with her leadership, creating a new path forward. And even though it doesn't look quite the same, we have learned a lot and never has it been more obvious that we live in an interconnected world. So mobility is slowly but surely returning. We currently have 10 students abroad and are sending nearly 200 for the January term. And we've been able to welcome international students back to campus this fall. And I'm very thankful for the hard work of, of global engagement, the department for their role in this effort. Even with the return to mobility, we will continue to pivot and innovate and ensure that building a global perspective remains our priority. And I'm very pleased to introduce Anique Keel, Executive Director of Global Engagement and International Programs here at Drake University. You will learn about the ways we continue to uphold our commitment and mission to responsible global citizenship and so much more. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Provost Madison. Really appreciate the, the remarks. Um, and, and the support that you've given us over the years in, in doing many of the things that you that you described in your in your welcome. So thank you so much for your My pleasure. support. So I, I see we have a number of folks from our partner universities, which makes me very happy. Um, as the provost said, I, I wish you were here in person. I will continue to to hope that, that that it is the case that you are here on campus with us um, next year but at the meantime we will continue to connect in this way now that we're all so familiar with this um, way of connecting and and I, I really uh, look forward to seeing what what lies ahead for for each of our institutions so I will share my screen now I have a presentation and um, don't let the number of slides scare you. Um, we certainly have a lot to work through, but I will do so um, swiftly. Can you see my presentation? Anyone? Yes. Okay, perfect. So um, I want to begin by just sh sharing a little bit about the week at Drake. Those of you that have been here during International Education Week may be familiar with the types of events that we offer, but we do have a number of events for faculty, staff, students, and beyond during this week. Um, so just a few highlights here that you can see of sessions that have already taken place a couple of them with partner universities. And then I've highlighted in light blue the ones that are still coming up. So there's still, still a chance to, to participate if you haven't been able to attend events yet today. Today at four o'clock um, on the student side, we have 
Oh, somebody okay. needs to be muted. I think maybe Hannah can help with that. Um, global career talks for students that are interested in global professions, global careers. We'll have a panel of experts that they themselves are, are in global careers. Um, and that's today at four o'clock. Also today at 11 a.m. Um, Central Time, we have a spotlight on our global practitioner in residence. Our current global practitioner in residence is in the College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. And she is a physician and she has lived and abroad in many locations and has uh, had a focus on global public health. So really interesting to hear from her. And then tips for, our, for faculty looking to market their travel seminars um, also this afternoon. And this evening we have trivia, international trivia, always a hit with the students. And then on Saturday evening, a big event for us every year is iNight, our international student night. Uh, where international students that are here on campus showcase their home cultures and it's a celebration of the diversity that is our, our, our Drake campus community and so I encourage you if you are here in the area to, to attend and tickets I know are still available. I begin, if you've heard me speak before, you've heard me talk about comprehensive internationalization and why this is so important to us. So I use ACE, the American Council on Education's graphic, because I think it really helps to demonstrate what we're focused on. In the provost's opening remarks, she mentioned that despite the fact that mobility has more or less ceased, had ceased for, for over a year, we were still able to bring a global perspective to campus. And the reason for that is this exact thing that I have in front of you now is that the global engagement effort does not stem simply from the department that I oversee. It is a campus effort. And, and as we say, one of our core, core values at this institution, we are all in this together. And so these are the number of ways that it is infused. I'll start here with the middle left for me, institutional commitment. Does the institution have a, a commitment, an articulated commitment to this cause? Are there policies that are that are in support of engagement? Um, does the leadership, are there leadership positions dedicated to globalization and, and are those leaders on, on key strategic teams? And the answer for Drake is yes. Uh, do we have global in, in our curriculum? And, and the answer here is yes for us as well. It's part of our core curriculum, all students are required to take classes that have a designation as global or, or intercultural, um, as well as in the co-curricular sphere, there are many opportunities for engagement. Faculty and staff, we offer a number of ways for them to become involved and also offer financial support. That's also a big piece of it. You know, we can offer it, but can, can is it affordable? And, and here we, we really do put funding support behind, behind those initiatives. Mobility, obviously, as the provost said, it's really kind of at the heart of this, um, sending students out, bringing students in, sending faculty out, bringing faculty and scholars in. It really is a way that we can, can continue to build <clears throat> our build our own global perspective, but really to exchange those important cultural identities and values. Partnerships around the world, um, many of you on the call, the majority of you are, are from our partners. And obviously, you know the value, the inherent value of building those collaborative relationships and creating opportunities for a campus community to, to really engage. And right at the core of it, the heart of it, um, teaching, research, and service, those are faculty terms. And, and I believe, and many believe, you internationalize as a campus through the faculty. And so this is really at the heart of what we do is creating opportunities for internationalization through faculty engagement. So here at Drake, I, I put up our mission statement here. You'll see there are three tenants uh, of the mission statement. The third is responsible global citizenship. And for an institution like Drake, this gives us really leverage resources, um, a foundation to build on. And it, it really, I would say, makes things easier in terms of um, putting forth new ideas, new programs, et cetera, because we can tie it back to, to our mission. And then uh, our university does not have a traditional strategic plan. Rather, we have what's called a continuous improvement plan. And that takes the shape of a balanced scorecard. And this scorecard is meant to be current, fluid, and very focused and intentional on our institutional priorities. We have four uh, commitment areas within our, our plan. Teaching and learning is one, reflection, 
execution and stewardship. Those are the four commitment areas. And I'm highlighting here for you teaching and learning. Um, these are the six objectives that fall within that commitment area. And, and these are across the entire institution. You'll see that the fifth is focused on the infusion of global and intercultural learning throughout the Drake experience. So associated with this objective are targets, measures, so that we know we're making progress on this. And again, with this level of commitment, it really helps facilitate the work that we do. In addition to the university level commitment here, each of the colleges and schools, and we have seven here at Drake, each of them as well have been asked and, and, and do have a global engagement objective measure and target in their own um, scorecards. So again, really that infusion model of, of coming throughout the entire campus. How do we know? So when we set targets like that, how, are we, how do we know that we're making progress on that goal or objective? This is one way we look at global, the infusion of global and intercultural learning throughout a number of, of ways, but this is one way through this composite that we track. So you'll see <clears throat> we're looking at the percentage of students here that study abroad, that study a foreign language, or that study in a global academic program. And our target is 39% and of students doing one or more of those things. So if you're looking at the percentages along the bottom, you'll see that we've made amazing progress um, over the years in, in on this particular um, objective and target. So the, this is just one way that we, that we look at this, but again, it's important to, to show data in, in showing how we're making progress on those objectives. I mentioned that at the heart of, of the work is the Global Engagement Department. However, we, we do rely on the, on the campus and our community and, and international partners to deliver on our mission. But I wanted to introduce you, I, I'm sure many of you on the call are familiar with the individuals on our team, but wanted to, to put this up. I think it can be very helpful to see structurally how things are organized. So you'll see at the top, we have a couple of, of faculty members, Professor Jimmy Santeza and Professor Karen LaRue. These are faculty members that, that assist with our efforts, either through a course release or stipend. And, and the Nelson Institute, you'll learn more about in a moment. Professor LaRue uh, assists our students in seeking Fulbright and other postgraduate global scholarships. So really important position for us. On the left top, you'll see the Global Engagement Advisory Council. I'll talk about that in a moment. It's a faculty council that, that really guides our, our efforts. And then the various staff area, staffing areas, Hannah, I'm sure all of you are very familiar with Hannah by now, if you're from our partner university, but also probably if you're, if you're on campus, uh, Hannah oversees International Education Week. She coordinates all of our global partnerships. Maria oversees the education abroad programming. So all of the outbound pro programs <clears throat> and Karen and Nathan work to, to assist in that effort and the student workers report up through that area. Kendra oversees our International Student Scholar Services area. So once students are here, helping them integrate, get them integrated into campus, helping them with immigration advising. Gerona, uh, our advisor is very instrumental in that and connecting them in, in the campus community and beyond. We also have an intensive English program as part of that area. It's a non-credit bearing program to support international students in their pursuit of, of the English language. And we have a number of adjunct faculty teaching in that program. And then finally, I'm really happy to announce that as of July 1st, we also have international recruitment um, as part of our, our portfolio. And Patrick has joined our team and, and we you will hear much more about this uh, shortly, but really excited to have that element under our, um, under our portfolio really helping to tie it in strategically to include that, that focus um, and commitment area. And holding it all together is, is Bonnie. Bonnie is our budget manager, but she does so much more, uh, not only keeping us financially in our, in our lanes, but also really assisting overall with the administrative effort of the unit. All right, I mentioned GIAC, GIAC, the Global Engagement Advisory Council. GIAC is a faculty uh, committee uh, with representatives from each of our colleges and schools, plus representatives of several key uh, programs or departments, a representative from our World Languages and Cultures Department, 
the Nelson Institute uh, faculty director, principal center for global citizenship representative, and then Dr. LaRue, who is the advisor for the postgraduate scholarships. These folks are really our advocates and champions of global efforts, and they serve as liaisons back out to the colleges and schools. I've mentioned this infusion model, this comprehensive internationalization model. This is a perfect example of how we make this uh, come to life. So we, we share our initiatives and our ideas with these faculty. They bring these, this information back out to the colleges. But on the flip side, if we're in need of engagement and support on particular initiatives, they can bring those folks into us. So it's a, it's a key way that we really engage the whole campus. I mentioned the Principal Center for Global Citizenship and the Nelson Institute. These are two externally funded entities that really bring a significant um, bring significant depth and breadth to our efforts. So these entities offer programs, funding, grant scholarships, and otherwise sponsor events related to global perspective building and intercultural learning and development. So these have been instrumental for us in, in really putting uh, funding behind ideas, but also engaging our faculty, staff, and students intentionally through programming that we're able to offer ourselves. Um, I'm going to, it, rather than going over, you know, all the things that we're doing across campus, because we'd be here for several hours, um, I'm going to highlight one key, one or two key initiatives from each of the areas that I've just uh, talked about. Um, and, and of course, if there are questions about additional things that we're offering, I'm happy to take those questions at the end. Um, one of the key ways we've pivoted in during the pandemic is shifting to virtual connectivity. I know that that doesn't, that seems, that seems obvious, but globally, it's been something we've been wanting to focus more on, and this has really given us the impetus to do so. The principle for Principal Center for Global Citizenship has provided a significant level of support in this effort. We've appointed a faculty fellow, one of our faculty members in the College of Business and Public Administration, Dr. Elena Mitchell, to support faculty in bringing a global virtual component to their class or project. Uh, and we're delighted to have her in this role. The opportunities include uh, um, things such as course to course collaboration. So joint connectivity between two classes of Drake and say a partner university, problem-based collaboration, you know, working with an organization locally or abroad on a global issue, um, international site access. If, if we have a class that's focusing on a specific um, location, uh, organization, et cetera, abroad, using some of our international um, affiliate study abroad providers or other partners to provide a virtual tour of that site in the classroom, um, bringing global experts virtually into classes and panels. And we're able to do this through grants that are available. And these, the application for these are open. It's awarded on a rolling basis. So for those of you that are here at Drake, please know this is available to you. And if you're from our partner universities, also please know that we have a mechanism to create some very unique virtual um, connect connection points and, and would love to talk more about that if, if that's something you're interested in. For the Nelson Institute, we've been very fortunate to be able to include a, a capacity building component into that portfolio. And in starting in fall of 2020, we began sponsoring cohort programs for inter intercultural training and coaching. So 14 professors at Drake have now been through this program. And the idea is that they themselves will take a deep dive into intercultural learning, looking at themselves as cultural beings to start. What are their personal values? Who are they as a cultural being? And then thinking about how they interface with those that have different cultural identities bringing that knowledge and experience into the classroom is the whole idea. So back to Provost Madison's comment again about bringing the, the global infusion into the classroom. This is a way that we can do that is we expose faculty to these experiences, the self-reflection piece themselves. Um, these individuals that go through the training are designated as Nelson Fellows and they do receive a stipend. Currently we have five faculty in the program and this is something we hope to continue to offer next year as well. 
Um, I want to just point out, I mentioned the role of faculty. These are just a few ways that faculty can become involved in global engagement efforts. I've mentioned teaching uh, scholars. Facu Drake faculty have the ability to teach at our partner universities. We're, we have and do re receive on a regular basis inbound scholars from partners and beyond. We have a global practitioner in residence program. I'll talk more about that here in a moment. A virtual projects doing collaborative joint research with partners at, at universities. We also have through the Nelson Institute what's called a Pressing Global Issues Grant. It's a, it's a grant program for joint student faculty research projects. Those are two-year grants. They focused on things such as water quality, uh, alternative medicine in India. Um, so really taking a global pressing issue and taking again a closer look with hands-on experiential research um, and, and again, that's, a, that's through the Nelson Institute. We also provide financial support for our professors to, to present internationally at conferences. On the development side, really keying in on service, mentorship, professional development, our professors can, can lead travel seminars abroad. Um, they can serve on the, on, the, on the GIAC, the Global Engagement Advisory Council, participate in the Intercultural Learning Program, or incorporate something like the IDI into their classes, which is the Intercultural Development Inventory. It's a, it's a survey that really assesses one's intercultural competence, but there are ways to, to infuse that, uh, to use that tool to infuse that learning into, into the classroom environment. So these are just a few ways that we promote this effort and support the work of our faculty. Some additional key global engagement initiatives I wanted to highlight for you across the, the, our portfolio and beyond. One is was just announced yesterday, actually through a news release um, that prof former governor and, uh, there are so many titles, I don't even know where to begin. Former governor uh, and former ambassador, uh, Terry Branstad, uh, we have just appointed as as ambassador in residence at Drake University. So a couple of fun facts about the ambassador. Well, he, he is and remains the longest serving governor in US history. I believe he was governor for a total of 22 years. Um, he had, has most recently served as ambassador of the US to China from 2017 to 2020. And he is a Drake graduate. So he um, completed his law degree at Drake University and, and has had a a real affili strong affiliation with our institution since. So as his, in his role as ambassador in residence, he will engage with students. That's really his primary interest is he wants to, and he will, he already, I believe has started holding office hours. He'll present in classes. And in, in related to this, the work of this um, area of global engagement, we will be hosting an annual symposium on US-China relations. And the idea is that this will be an annual symposium symposium, hoping to offer it in the fall of 22 to start. And we will, uh, I believe Hannah may have already connected with our partner universities in China on this, um, as well as faculty experts on US-China relations um, to bring this, this opportunity to, to Drake's campus. Um, so looking forward to that, more to come, uh, definitely more to come, but wanted to be sure that, that this information was shared today. I mentioned international recruitment is now an, an area of focus for, for global engagement. I'm sharing here a piece of our strategic plan which highlights target markets and priority countries. Now, please be clear, this is not comprehensively for all global engagement efforts, this is just for recruitment. So associated with each of these market, markets and countries, we have tactics, um, different things that we're deploying within these markets to, to reach um, international student populations. And you'll see an asterisk next to India and, and Nigeria. In those particular countries, we have taken a, an additional step of securing a recruitment partner on, on the ground. Um, and so the way that that, that is, is playing out is in Nigeria, we're working with a, a, a nonprofit called GIVA, um, which is a, an actually a, a testing center and, and career counseling office, but also really focusing on youth engagement in Nigeria. Um, they are serving as a recruitment partner for us and Gen Next in India as well. And then the Gen Next um, organization 
and that one we're taking it a, a, a step even further and that Gen next is hiring a an individual to recruit exclusively on behalf of Drake in India. And so I uh, just talked to a, a, the young woman who will be taking that role. She She's energetic and, and very excited. And so that's a new initiative um, for, for us. So we're looking forward to having more Indian students on campus in, in the next few years. A number of other tactics, marketing, um, looking at our own backyard, so to speak, at an Iowa community colleges or two-year colleges that have significant international student populations and building some transfer programs up for them. And of course, engaging our alumni across the world. Shifting to study abroad, I'm, I'm very, very excited to announce, this is also hot off the press, that Drake is nationally in undergraduate participation in study abroad amongst doctoral institutions. So this is uh, newly released from IIE, the Institute for International Education. They, they released their annual Open Doors report. And so this, this is, is very exciting for us, number 17 in the country. So if you if you look at this list, you'll see some some heavy hitters, Drake, of course, being one of them. Um, and and this is just a, a good group to be a part of, but something that you'll see more press about here in the coming days and weeks. So um, again, education abroad, something that that we have a, a strong focus on and just um, initiatives that we're really keying in on education abroad at the moment our increasing participation. We wanna see even more students go, but more importantly, we wanna diversify participation. We wanna make sure that students that are not currently represented in our education abroad populations um, can, can have access to opportunities and also have financial support to do so. So, so looking at, at doing that and continuing to, to grow our own cohort programs. So of course we've been sending students abroad for a full semester for decades, but looking to create more of our own co cohort programs led by Drake faculty. So we, we did launch our first cohort program in Spain in spring of 2020. Uh, one wonderful year, wonderful semester to start that off in the heart of a pandemic. Um, but Spain is our first location. We'll be growing that to at least three other cohort sites. So uh, those of you that are at our partner universities, um, we will be speaking with you about our plans for that as well. Another key initiative in education abroad is through the IDEAS grant. So we were, um, again, another, another accolade here for education abroad. We were selected amongst 26 US institutions to serve as a, as a partner for the IDEAS grant. So IDEAS is really, the grant is focused on providing access and opportunities for education abroad. And so we focused in our proposal on Panama. We have a, have a strategic interest as a university in Panama. And so the, the grant itself is really supporting engagement um, with Panama, but also beyond. So expanding our study abroad opportunities for all students with a, part, with a particular focus on our Latinx students. Um, so this will be through partnership development, faculty-led program development, um, and research and marketing. So it will support travel to Panama, developing partnerships, um, as well as fund, funding will be used to support a faculty member in our College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, as well as our Spanish department to develop a short-term faculty-led program in Panama called Spanish for Healthcare. Uh, a really exciting initiative that the grant will be funding is we have two students working in our office uh, under, with the support of the grant that are taking a deep dive into our data of who is studying abroad at Drake and more importantly, who isn't. And uh, with the aim of developing targeted advice, promotional and funding to increase participation of underrepresented students in study abroad with a particular focus again on the Latinx students. So really exciting stuff um, on that front. On the international student and scholar services side, we have created a brand new program uh, called DICE, the Drake Intercultural Community Exchange. Uh, we just started this program in fall of 2021. This was a brainchild of, of Kendra's and, and really put into place by Girona, the, the ISSS team. And this is looking to build connections for international students, plain and simple, um, looking to, to, to create um, 
um, mentorship opportunities, uh, activity connection, et cetera. And we put a call out to our own campus community. We have 13 Drake faculty and staff that are serving as hosts and 22 students opted in. And this has been already a very meaningful and an important uh, program for our community. There are or organized activities that, that we put forth, but then they also are expected to meet and engage on their own, a minimum of once a month. And so really excited about that. We're expanding this to include the Des Moines community and beyond starting in fall of 22. So, so more to come on, on the DICE program. Other initiatives, key initiatives coming out of the, what we call ISSS, International Student Scholar Services, is with a focus on our intensive English program. So I mentioned this non-credit bearing program. Two key initiatives coming out of this program. One is a pathway or bridge program, which combines our non-credit English program with credit bearing courses. So for students that have not quite met the TOEFL requirement of 71, but above 60, will be able to enroll in a minimum number of credit bearing courses courses as a bridge to until they can um, begin the, their um, academic program at Drake. So this is an exciting program we're hoping to, to begin in spring of 22. And then again, focusing on um, ways that we can creatively build our intensive English program is through custom programs. So inbound short-term programs. And, and again, if you're from our partner university, this is something for you to be aware of. But we are, uh, we, we do have uh, a framework for short term, you know, anywhere from two weeks to a month, or really it can be tailored to your needs and interests to bring in groups of students or professors or uh, business associates to come in and do an intensive English program with experiential learning at the heart of it. So it's time in the classroom, but it's time also exploring the community around us and engaging uh, in meaningful ways. I mentioned our global scholars. Our global principal global scholar and global practitioner in residence program is an important way for us to bring scholars to campus to engage with our students and our campus community. This fall, we're hosting Dr. Ann Colbert. She is a, a, she's a physician, as I mentioned. She's housed in the College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. She has spent time uh, practicing medicine in Belize and Zambia, the US-Mexico border. Um, and you can hear her talk about her experiences at 11 o'clock today central. So if you're able to, to plug into that, I highly encourage you to do so. Um, Dr. Herbert Moyo from our partner university in UK, in South Africa, University of KwaZulu-Natal, will be here in the spring. Dr. Moyo has engaged over the years with our religion and philosophy professor, Dr. Tim Nepper, and they will be working uh, collaboratively on a photo narrative project showcasing the religions of South Africa, which is fascinating. We heard them describe more about their project yesterday. Um, so looking forward to hosting. Dr. Moyo here in the spring. And the call for, for nominations, so again, if you're from our partner university, perk up, um, is we will be uh, opening the call here soon with nominations due in February. So if you're interested in sending a global scholar or practitioner to Drake, please connect with us and we can, can work with our, our um, colleges and schools on that. And again, if you're from Drake and you're interested in bringing a global scholar, please uh, keep your eye out for that, that call as well. Now, partnerships. Many of you will see your home countries here as you're, you're currently there. Um, this is our, our beautiful map um, put together by Hannah showing our, the diverse locations of our partners. We currently have 16 partners in, in 13 countries. And so really looking carefully at what are we doing with these partners? What do we want to do with these partners? Um, I'll talk more about that here in a moment. But for special initiatives, we recommitted to our existing partners um, here in, um, sorry, I lost my, recommitting to existing partners whose whose uh, MOUs had, had expired or we needed to make some changes. So you may see your institution listed here, um, as well as looking at 
uh, new opportunities that we have created with, with partners. And I'll go into describing those here briefly. I'm going to, to start with the American Chamber of Commerce in Kosovo. So this is the photo that you see on this slide was from that signing ceremony. The American Chamber of Commerce in Kosovo is a partner that we will be utilizing to support our Working Worldwide program. So that is a postgraduate program that we offer. So it started out as Teach in China, um, obviously not in Kosovo, in China in 2004. And we've sent, sent over 250 individuals to teach English for a year or longer in, in China. And we expanded that opportunity to include a second location in Kosovo in 2019. And we currently have two individuals working in Kosovo through the program. And the American Chamber of Commerce will really serve as, uh, as a, a placement agency for us. So students that are looking for particular types of placements, um, they can uh, certainly, they will assist us with that. Taylor's University, brand new partner for us, but a long-term relationship. Uh, so Taylor's, we have received Taylor's students from, from Malaysia for, for many years through their American degree transfer program. So students start out in, in Malaysia for two years and complete their degree program at Drake. Um, and that this is something that we're expanding upon with uh, the third year would potentially we're working on would be a, a remote experience for the Malaysian students with the fourth year in person. So working on some, some specific uh, core curricular mapping on that now. But throughout 2021, we've had Drake faculty from our, our College of Business, our College of Arts and Sciences, as well as the College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences collaborating virtually with Taylors through their US lecture series. So again, the virtual global connectivity, we've, we have been doing that with them and looking forward to, to more, um, more engagement. And I, I can't see if, if Prema or anyone from Taylors is here, but, but welcome if so. And our third um, new partner is the City of Knowledge. And I believe that Vilma is here from the City of Knowledge. So I wanna give a special welcome. Uh, the City of Knowledge has been a, a, a partner in a sense for, for a number of years since we've begun our, our visits to Panama over the last three or four years. And we've really zeroed in on some unique partnership efforts uh, with the City of Knowledge. In fact, they're playing an, an instrumental role in the Ideas Grant that I mentioned earlier in hosting um, faculty and, and really helping to expand Drake's reach in, in Panama. In fact, we have a Drake professor there now that the City of Knowledge is, is, is hosting. Uh, Dr. Jared Cruz is there doing some exploratory work for a trip he's taking to Panama with students in January. So thank you for your support of, of Dr. Cruz and looking forward to hearing more about um, his experience as well. So, so these are new engagements that we have and continuing to build on, on those efforts. We're in the process of developing under Hannah's leadership, a new comprehensive strategic vision for our partnerships in the, num in the next three to five years. And this will include a review of the, the partnership portfolio and exploration of new partners that, that meet our strategic interests and needs. Partnerships play such a critical role in student engagement, faculty engagement, um, institution to institution, initiatives. There are just a number of ways that, that we engage with our partners and they play such a pivotal role in the global engagement work. So um, continuing to, to grow in that area. There is a grant program that supports this work. So I want, again, the Drake community, but also our partners to be aware, if you're not aware already, that we do have the Global Partnerships Grant Program. And this grant provides the, the is is the primary support at least from Drake's side to support our faculty staff uh, faculty and staff in engaging with our international partners. So the way that this looks is a is a Drake professor submits an application for a specific project or idea. That application is reviewed by myself and the dean of their associated college or school. 
And then we make a joint award for, for that work. So I know a number of you on the call have, have worked with faculty at Drake that have been recipients of this funding. And it really is uh, super important for, for us in ensuring that, that we have the level of engagement that we were striving for with our partners. So this, this application process is open now for fiscal year 23. So we operate on a July to June, end of June fiscal year. So these, these awards would be made um, for activities beginning in July of 2022. And the deadline is, is coming up. I know January seems like a long ways away, but as we know, time is somehow flying by more quickly than ever. So um, just keeping that July 7th date on your radars. And finally, a, a, a really important initiative that we're undertaking here on campus is to um, connect beyond the colleges and schools. I mentioned that the colleges and schools have each been asked to, to indicate a global engagement objective measure and target. We're moving beyond the colleges and schools into the, into the departments listed here on the slide to also um, encourage them to, to have a global en engagement objective measure and target on their individual unit scorecards as well. So at Drake, each of our units has a, a balanced scorecard in support of a, the continuous improvement plan. So this really brings it full circle. Um, of course, this is not all of Drake's departments. These are primarily academically linked um, programs. In the case of athletics, we have a long history of, of global engagement. So ensuring that they're on this on this list as well. But working with them on, on specific targets, is it, is it, are they looking to support students going abroad in the case of athletics? Or, or how can we build more global community engaged learning experiences into, into our portfolio of courses? How can we partner with campus equity and inclusion on projects that meet the goals for each of us? How can we leverage research and assessment in, in taking a look at, at our global initiatives in ways that we can enhance and improve what we're doing, et cetera? So again, just really emphasizing the comprehensive nature of our work. And the last thing I'll mention is an upcoming event in March, which is our Global Citizen Forum. So we've moved to two key weeks or two key times of really promoting Drake as a global institution and our and celebrating our partnerships and connectivity. The first is this week, International Education Week, which is always the third week of November. And then the second one is the Global Citizen Forum happens in the spring semester. And it, there's a theme every year, uh, the first year, and this is only, I believe this will be the third year. The first year was migration um, was the theme and the speakers, the workshops, everything was built around that theme. Uh, recently, we had perspectives of uh, on privilege in higher education, and we, we had a, a, actually an international conference that we launched in partnership with the University of KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa with over 300 attendees virtually. It was, it was amazing. Um, and the focus there was, again, on, on privilege in higher education, different perspectives on privilege. And this year, we're focusing on change making. So, uh, our our interest, or I would say, our 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 really our strong connection to the change making initiative came through our partner in Mexico, Monterey Tech University in Guadalajara. The provost, to myself and others, had visited and were just really taken aback by how um, focused they were on social innovation, social social entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship. Excuse me problem solving, um, using, uh, using real you know, agents of change in, in making a difference in their community. And, and Drake has launched our capital campaign um, in, in October. And one of the key initiatives of the campaign is every bulldog a change maker. So we're using this theme as the theme for our Global Citizen Forum. And we will have keynote speaker, um, the Nelson Institute, always has a research symposium during this event and we will do so again where we're asking students to share of their change maker experiences. And then finally, there will be a faculty, a really unique faculty event uh, um, called, when we're using the Pecha Kucha 
um, modality for that event. And if you're not familiar with what that is, it's a very fast paced photo narrative presentation. So using photos to describe one's work or project in, in I think five minutes or less. So it's it will be a really fast paced um, way to 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 see how faculty Drake faculty have have used change making in their work and if the, obviously the idea is to get more faculty engaged in this effort as well and we are hosting this forum in partnership with Monterey Tech University in Mexico so there will be involvement from from our partner in Mexico in the events and um, also doing some virtual collaboration with them during that during the few days of the program. So I am going to stop um, sharing my screen so that we can get back to, uh, let's see, there we go. Get to some questions that you all may have or comments. I have not looked at, at the chat, so I'm, I'm looking there now to see anything. Okay, Vilma, yes, wonderful. Happy to, to be partnering with you as well. Does anyone have any questions based on, oh, I see I have a raised hand. Jawiria Sabaduka. Um, thank you, Anik. I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. Yes, and I hope I pronounced your name right. Yes, you did. Thank you so much for taking us through. It's been a very good program. Um, I'm a student from MOOCs, Macquarie University Business School, Uganda. And I have a question about the program because we were supposed to be with you guys last year, by, no, 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 this year, February, but because of the pandemic, we're not able to. So my current question is, are we, st are we still having the opportunity to be part of the program next year because we shall be done with school by February? And I'm kindly, kindly begging you to give us an opportunity because we really, really worked hard to be part of this and we're so excited to be part of it. But because of the pandemic, we are not able to. to yes, and so, my yeah, thank you. I really appreciate um, your question. And uh, so you are speaking of the trip to the US in, in February, is that, is that the program? Yes, because we're expecting you guys last year in June, then us were supposed to come that side this year, February. So so the program that Jaweria is speaking of, for those of you that may not be familiar, is a, is a joint student program that we've uh, run with our partner in Uganda, Makara University Business School, for the last 14, I believe, years. And so the way that it looks is we send a group of Drake students in May and June to Uganda. And our students are partnered with 10 students from MOOBS, our partner university. And they spend three weeks doing a, a look at sustainable development, looking at healthcare, looking at um, the different industries within you know, microfinance, different, different areas within sustainable development. And they're looking at that side by side. So it's a really powerful intercultural learning experience. Those then 10 Ugandan students come to Drake the following February to do a similar program, although the focus here um, is on leadership. And so it's a, it's a real nice full circle intercultural model. And you're correct. We have not unfortunately been able to, to do this program due to the, to the pandemic. However, our plan is to send students to Uganda in May. Um, that was, it's been preliminarily approved, uh, you know, pending a final risk review, which will happen in sometime early in the spring semester. So, you know, with the hope that that program is, is able to, to proceed, and then, then yes, the idea is that there would be a program, a follow-on program the following February. Mm, and sorry, can I continue? So if if your students come to Uganda next year, it will be 2022. Does that mean the MOB students will be accepted to come the following year? That's 2023, February. Yes, that would be the idea. Yes. That means us who happen to have supposed 
was supposed to come and then the pandemic came into the way we are off the hook <laughs> we can't make it uh well i ask you to connect with i know professor wabukala is is on the call i would ask you to um, speak with him or or fred and and discuss your specific case okay thank you Annie. thank you very much you're welcome what else Any other or, or comments or, or any information to share? Oh, Sue, for Provost yeah, I was wondering if we could go around and yeah. meet themselves. That's a great idea. Where they're from. Yes. So let's start. I'm going to just start across my screen. So let's ask Robert to begin. Sure. OK. Good evening uh, from, from uh, Vienna, Austria. And um, yeah, I mean, Anik, I don't have any questions because, you know, that was very informative. And uh, you probably remember in 2019, I joined the, the International um, Impact Week uh, at Drake, and I really loved it. Also because I spent some time of my life in, in, in Iowa, and uh, I really loved the place. And in fact, we had everything lined up in 2020 to welcome a, a number of, of uh, professors from Drake to teach at our school. And then, um, you know, the pandemic started and yeah, messed up the world. Yeah, we are still on it and we, we're trying to, to um, bring the, the professors uh, to our campus uh, in the following years, maybe next year already. Uh, but what I'd really like to mention is thank you very much for your effort to keeping this international network together. I mean, international relations works best with personal contacts mm -hmm. and personal relations and, you know, connecting on Zoom and or MS Teams is great, but it can never, never substitute personal contacts mm -hmm. and uh, knowing how well that international week in 2019 worked i know what i will get out of it in the future yeah so uh, we are still in contact with with uh, the professors in the, in the business school we're trying to get them to campus to teach and i think uh, we'll just continue where we left off in 2019 um to to establish some kind of regular uh, faculty mobility uh, because i mean the student mobility still works, although of course it slowed down during the pandemic, but I'm really glad to see that that this network is intact and I'm, I really enjoyed your presentation. So thank you very much. That is not really a question, that is a comment, but uh, yeah, oh, I, I'm, I'm glad that I can join it. Wonderful, so glad to have you here. It was such a delight to host you in, in 2019 and, and you're right, I mean, international partnerships and relations take a lot of effort, and especially at a distance, especially when we can't travel as part of, of the, the program. So um, I'm, I'm really glad too that we're able to continue to engage in this way. So thank you. And Jawuria, you, you mentioned you're a, you're a MOOB student and what are you studying? Is she still there? She may have stepped away. Okay, next on my screen is Swale Sasanga. Hello. Hi, Anik. Hi. Yeah, I'm Swale Sasanga from Makerere University Business School, Uganda. Yeah. Uh, actually, Joeria is my, she's my fellow student. We do the same course, bachelor's in business computing. Yes, we are in our final year. Wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. I actually had the sim a similar question with her. So she, you already answered it. So thank you. Yes. Thank you. And Hannah, you're next on my screen. 
just want to say a hello. <laughs> hello, everyone. Um, if you are from one of our partner institutions, you likely got the invitation from me. Um, my name is Hannah Sappenfields, and I'm the Global Partnerships Coordinator. So um, I look forward to work continuing to work with you all virtually. Um, and then, you know, as soon as we can get you to campus or uh, visit your campuses, we certainly will will facilitate that. So it's a pleasure seeing you all um, seeing you all uh, virtually today. Thanks, Hannah. Uh, ben Wabukala. Thank you, Anik, and a good evening to everyone from Uganda. Bernard Wabukala is my name. I am faculty at the Department of Economics at Makero University Business School. Proudly, I want to start by mentioning that uh, what Anik has walked us through is exactly what some of us have actually enjoyed from these partnerships. I was a Fulbright Scholar in Residence at the College of Business at Drake University for semester. So yes, when I see this being founded <laughs> over and again, oops. This is really exactly what uh, Drake brings to the table to all the partners that we see. So I'm really excited and very informative, Anik, for what you have shared with us um, today. Uh, one issue that I'm really excited about and seeing what Makara University Business School can do is to tap into what you mentioned as the virtual connection points. Yeah. Maybe for extra information, would this mean, for instance, uh, students uh, in my class uh, attending, for instance, a class at Drake, if you know we make those plans and arrangements. Otherwise, thank you very much and best wishes to everyone. Thank you, Ben. And, and yes, uh, we can follow up with you on that. It absolutely could look like a joint um, virtual exchange between classes. So that's exactly the type of thing we're hoping to, to create. Uh, I see. Yes, I see. Um, so let's see, let me get over here. Uh, Kendra. Sure, let me, uh, <laughs> you can't see most of my face. We are um, in a very open concept space. So hello, uh, I am Kendra Hussain Moorhead, Director of International Student and Scholar Services. And just excited to see so many people here from different places. Uh, and hopefully we'll have the chance to meet some of you in person in the future. Thanks, Kendra. Jerona? I also am sitting in the same office space, um, but I am the International Student Advisor here at Drake. Um, many of your students, hopefully in the future when they're here, will interact with me in some way. So I just look forward to uh, getting to know them and meeting them soon. Thanks, Jerona. Nathan? Yes, hello, uh, my name is Nathan Jacobson. I am the Education Abroad Coordinator. So I primarily work on the outbound programs, especially our faculty-led travel seminars like the Panama J-Term Travel Seminar that is coming up this, this January. Wonderful. Bonnie? Oh, hi there, sorry. The mute was getting me. Um, and let's see if I can get my picture up here. Um, I am Bonnie Ayler. I am the budget manager for uh, Drake International or Global Engagement. We've changed names along the way. So it's just so good to see like Robert and Vilma uh, on this call, Bern uh, Bernard, uh, Fred, um, just because I've gotten to interact with you um, over the last several years uh, and enjoying those relationships across the world. So um, yes, I definitely look forward to getting people back on campus for International Education Week. We had a great time in 2019. So um, hopefully we can do it again here in the next year or so. Wonderful. Thanks, Bonnie. Vilma? Hi. Hi, Vilma. Hi. For a while, I would take this out. Oh, that's great. 
Um, let me see, congratulations for the so successful work that you have been doing. I didn't have an idea how, how big is that. So um, from me and from my organization, the City of Knowledge, um, I'm feel proud, we feel proud that, you know, be part of that uh, work that you have been doing. And from here, um, we are so excited with the Professor Sandys, with, with him now, taking it to be the, uh, do a tour. I will meet him for the lunch for the Professor Gary. And so very excited because of the pandemic, we have to be suspended the last two years, our um, projects. But finally, I think that we will get it for the next year and hopefully we can continue this in the future. So thanks again and congratulations. You have been doing a successfully some very excited job. Great, thank you, Velma. I appreciate that and, and look forward to seeing you hopefully soon. Yes, me too, okay. And Professor Nkote, Isaac Nkote. Is he with us still? Okay, Professor and Coach. Ah, good oh. morning. Thank oh, you hi. very much. Hey, wonderful. Uh, th thank you very much. Thanks for the good presentation. Nice to hear from you people. It has been long, and I hope you are well. Mm -hmm. uh, we are really glad uh, for the presentation and the new, uh, the new initiatives being taken by Drake to enhance partnership. Uh, that is highly regarded at MOOBS. And I must extend our vote of thanks for the renewal uh, of our partnership. We are looking for more engagement and exploiting those areas where we have been uh, not very active over the few last few years. Uh, so thank you for the presentation and the really we look forward for continued uh, collaboration and exposing our students and the faculty in really exploring the USA and more areas of cooperation. Thank you very much and a nice morning. Wonderful. Nice to see you, Professor Nkote. And I think finally I have Sir Wanja Samuel. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I happened to, to call in later, but I was just a little caught up. But I just want to thank you for the engagement. And I, I just hope we shall have um, a good ride along. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes, appreciate the students being here. It's such a nice touch. All right. I think that we're now three minutes past our time so I will wrap up here but wanted to just thank you all again for being here um, as Robert mentioned this sustained engagement is what creates our our foundation and and we just need to keep um, connecting and virtually for now but also in some cases physically we're able to start doing that again so looking to continue um, our conversations and building new new engagements with each of our partners. So, and thank you, Provost Madison, again for for your support and for being here. My pleasure. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Thank you all.